Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'da habita fillah It's imperative that we adhere to the book of Allah And the sunnah of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi kitab al-kareem Fa inta naza'tum fi shayin Farduhu ilallahi wa rasulihi In kuntum tu'minun billahi Wal yawm al-akhir Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fi kitab al-kareem that if you disagree over something, then it's a command. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to return to the book in the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And we know that the ulama, they mention, the ulama of fiqh mention that the asl of a command in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, al-amr yafid al That when there's a command, that a command shows that it is an obligation in its origin, unless there's some other uh, evidence from the Book of Allah to show that that command is is not in uh, you know is mustahab. It's recommended that it goes from being a wajib, an obligation, to something which is recommended. And so it's imperative for us to return to the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in all of our criterion, in our criterion for determining who is Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, who's calling to the Book of Allah, who's calling to the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and part of those commandments of Eliza with Joe, and what we have a, a severe need to do in order to be a part of those who preserve the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, not those who Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will punish for breaking and splitting into sects and groups and attacking one another and destroying one another's honor. We don't want to be from them. We want to be of those whose scale of good deeds is heavy, not those whose scale of good deeds is light. And with that being the case, it's very important that Ahl Sunnah works together because we live in a time where there are so many people who oppose the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. There are so many innovative groups and sects. And I know people are tired of hearing that, but there's no way we can stop and cease speaking about the great evil that we face as a ummah, that we have so many people from the disbelievers who want to destroy Islam and want to see division, but we have so many people within Islam who attack Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, and so many Ahzab, so many groups. For example, some of the dangers that we face, the dangers of secularism, the dangers of liberalism, that people, for example, the group or the individual known as the uh, Muslim girl, uh, which I think is a tweeting uh, a group on Twitter, and that we have people like this who spread zandaka, they spread ilhad, they spread heresy, they spread uh, disbelief. They oppose the book and the sunnah in every way. And then we have those people who are proponents of dawah, or those people who give dawah, who are known, and they support people like this. They actually praise people like this who are propped up by disbelievers, are given money from disbelievers and supported by disbelief. So this means it's imperative in this day and age for us to be able to face the shubahat and the doubts of Ahlul Bid'ah, wa Zambaka, of the people of seculars. How many Muslims are going astray? How many Muslims are leaving Islam because of the shubahat of Ahlul Dalal? So many, I've seen so many people who apostated who are, who are born Muslim, who are born Muslim. And that's not including all the reverts that I've seen and that I've come into Islam as my colleagues and who've left Islam. All of this because Ahl Sunnah is weak and Ahl Sunnah is not following the commandments of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al-kareem, wa ta'awana la biri wa taqwa, wa la ta'awana la ithmi wa adwan. And adhere, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? He's commanding us. Adhere all of you fast, uh, steadfast to the rope of Allah. Wa ta'awana la biri wa taqwa. Allah has commanded us with cooperation, but la, 
لا. We're busy making takfir of one another and tabdi of one another. And I'm talking about between Ahlul Sunnah. Those people who to Mesek be kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or at least take from the ulama of Ahlul Sunnah, but yet over the slightest differences, they destroy one another's honor. Over the slightest differences, they attack and belittle one another over jealousy and his bia and ta'asa, blind following personalities and blind following uh, ulama and blind following fatwa without looking at the duwabit, the criteria, without looking at the shuruf, the conditions, without looking at all of those things that we're commanded to look at and our students of knowledge are commanded, especially they should be looking at these things and not letting fitna grow out of proportions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us, adhere to the rope of Allah. And what is the rope of Allah? <clears throat> the Mufassirin, the people of Tafsir, they explained, some of them explained the rope of Allah to be the Quran. And some of them explained the rope of Allah to be the Jama'ah. And some of them, uh, there's no ta'arud between them. There is no, we call this ikhtilaf to Noah. This means that there is a difference in gradations uh, in, in their differences regarding this explanation that don't contradict one another. So meaning that holding on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala includes both adhering to the Quran and both adhering to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and both adhering to and also adhering to the minhaj of the Salaf al-Salih. Ridwan Allahi alayhim. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, Khairan nas qarni thumma ladini yalunuhum thumma ladini yalunuhum. The best people is those people of my generation. Then those people who follow them, then those people who follow them. This is what we need to be upon. We need to resolve our differences. And those people who call to that, those people who are striving to adhere to that, even if they make mistakes, then you need to advise your brother. You can't destroy your brother. You can't busy yourself with the faults of your brother and you leave Ahl Ilhad wa Zandaka alone. And you leave the people who split Islam and destroy Islam and distort Islam. You leave the Takfiris to, to sleep and, and spread evil. You leave the Sufis to spread bid'ah in the communities and kufr and shirk. But yet you're busy in the people with destroying your brother who takes from the same ulama as you. Who adheres to the book and the sunnah like you. Or like you claim to, because as the ulama also mentioned, is a very important principle. Al ibra, al ibra, bi haqaiq, laysa bi musamiyat. That the reality of something is not in its name, but rather in its substance. Meaning, if I call this a pencil, you would not accept it, because the reality of the substance of this is that it's a miswak. It's not a pencil. You can't write with it, no matter how much you try to write with it. Likewise, the one who claims Salafiya, the one who claims to be from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, it's, it's a claim. It is only going to be a reality if they are practicing it and they have the creed of Ahl Sunnah. And they have the minhaj, the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. And they have the manners and the, all the aspects of the deen and the fiqh of Ahl Sunnah. This is what it's going. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, The Prophet ﷺ said, There isn't a thing which weighs heavier on the scale of a believer than good manners. And verily Allah hates wicked and sinful speech. So how is it that people can claim that having good manners is not from the sunnah? How can people claim that having good manners is not from the men to the salaf? How can people claim when the Salaf wrote so many books and there are so many athar about the importance of having good adab and manners? How many people from Ahl Hadith in the books of Hadith do they write about manners? And why is it that we can't cooperate and work together on birr wa taqwa as Allah has commanded us? Why is that? How much Salafiyyah is in that if someone is busy claiming someone else is a mubtadiyah based on their hawa? Not based on shurut and conditions or criterion that Allah has put forth and that the ulama sunnah have codified from the book, from the sunnah, and then preserving the sunnah. Why is that? Why are people busy, busy attacking Ahlul Sunnah and claiming to be from Ahlul Sunnah? Why is that? There are many reasons that we're not making the correct ta'awun. There are many reasons. Some of those reasons that we find is we see that there are many individuals who claim 
Salafia, but they really have the traits of Hizbiya. There are people who claim Salafia, but they have the traits of Hizbiya. What are the traits of Hizbiya that perhaps some of the individuals have and some of the groups and organizations have? Well, some of those traits that they have is that they call people to blind follow their sheikh or their mashayikh. That's one. And they force other people to take their opinion. Not based on Dalil, no. Sheikh so-and-so said it, you must accept it. He made tibdi of so-and-so, you must accept it. And you must make al-wala'u al bara based on that. That's Ayn al-Hizbiya. Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah spoke about this in depth. Sheikh al-Islam Muhammad ibn al spoke about this in depth. And how many athar of the Salaf, way before them, spoke about these issues and showed us the dangers of ta'asim and that even, even that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala when it was mentioned that uh, not to take, to take the opinion, do you take the, follow the opinion of Umar or Ali or uh, Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala or so and so and so and so, you take that and you don't take the view of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, this is what they said. The Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and the tabi'een. But yet we force people to take the opinions of us. We force people to take the opinions of him. Then at the same time we claim and we go against the principles that the Salaf used to say as uh, is uh, related on Imam uh, Malik, I believe, in a Tamheed, uh, Ibn, uh, Ibn Abdul Bar, Rahimahumullah Jami'an, in which he said, La yurath al haq bi rijal, walakin yurath al rijal bil haq. So, meaning that we don't know the truth based upon an individual. I can't say Sheikh so and so said this, have a haq. I can only say that if Sheikh so and so is saying the haq. And I can't, so we don't know the haq by individuals in askhas and maktabat and, and websites and forums. That's not how we know the truth. We know the truth from the book in the sunnah and we judge all those individuals and all those groups and all of those organizations in accordance with their adherence to the book in the sunnah are their actions in accordance with that is what they is what they are calling to in accordance with that accordance to the book and the sunnah or is it accordance to the hawa are they directing their attacks and not knowledge-based attacks based on garbage based on hawa, based on horrendous statements that go against the Prophet ﷺ's statement, which is, Are they going against that? There isn't a thing that weighs heavier on the scale of the believers than good manners? Are they illustrating good manners when they deal with one another? Are they following the maqsid of the shar', the intent of the shar'? which is ta'awun ala birr wa taqwa, is to cooperate in righteousness and piety, wala ta'awun ala ithmi wa adwan, and do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity. So in that ayah from Allah Azza wa Jal, we see nafi wa ithbat. We see an affirmation, ithbat, and we see nafi. The ithbat, the affirmation is that Allah commands you, meaning that, a positive affirmative statement is that Allah has commanded you to cooperate in bitter wa taqwa, in righteousness and piety. The, if, the, the nafi, the negation, is Allah has negated that you cooperated in evil and enmity. We live in a time where people condemn one another if they don't see them sitting with their sheikh. I don't see him in, in such and such dars with Sheikh so and so. I have doubt about his his uh, Sunniism that he he's from Ahl Sunnah. I have doubt about him. He's not really Salafi, or uh, he didn't take his motive. His position was not the position of Sheikh so and so or Talib al Alim so and so. So I doubt his Salafiyah. He's not really from Ahl Sunnah, or the people expect and make empty hand. They test one another based on individuals. Oh, I didn't see him in the dars of so-and-so. Oh, uh, what's your position on so-and-so? What's your position on this fitna between these mashayikh? Uh, what's your position? Are you from the Sa'afika? or are you from this one? Which one, who are you defending? Which one, why don't you get involved in the discord and the fitna? This is what people are busy with. 
And Ahlul Zandaq wa Ilhad is busy corrupting the minds of the Muslim youth everywhere because they have huge platforms. But you are busy in your microcosm of a world destroying one another and belittling Salafiyah, making the people think Salafiyah is that. And making Salafiyah look as if it's the minhaj like Ahl al-Takfir wa al-Khawarij. What did the Khawarij, the original Khawarij do as Imam Shah, Shah Nistani mentioned? Takfir ba'dhum min ba'd. That they made takfir, they declared one another to be disbelievers as the Prophet Sallallahu warned against. The Prophet Sallallahu also said that that is the minhaj of who? What is that the way of? He said, Al Khawarij Kilab al Nar. The Khawarij are the dogs of fire, are the dogs of the hellfire. Is that the methodology you want to go to? But yet, it may not be with takfir, but instead it's with tabdiyah. You make tabdiyah so much on everyone. One minute, so and so is your sheikh. Alama, so and so, bow. Next day, he's off it, he's destroyed, he's this, he's dal mudil. He's uh, Matruk, he's whatever, all kind of names and al qab all kind of nicknames and evil. And then you want to spread this to the youth and call that Salafiyah. You don't see that with the major scholars and you didn't see it with the, the major scholars from before. They had a hold on things. They had a hold on the Dawah. The Dawah was in a more pure form. And this is what, why we need to adhere to what the major scholars are telling us, to avoid hezbiyah and ta'awun ala bir wa taqwa. I'm not talking about ta'awun with the, the hezbiyin. I'm not talking about ta'awun with ahla, you know, all these groups and sects. The Prophet sallallahu said, if tarakatil yahud ala ihtu wa sabayin firqa, wa if tarakatil nasara ala natayin wa sabayin firqa, wa sa taftariku hadhi umala talatha wa sabayin firqa, kullaha fin nar ala wahida, kullaha man hiya ya rasulullah, kala man kana ala mithi ma kana alayhi wa sahabi. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, the Jews are breaking into 71 sects, Christians 72 sects, my ummah into 73 sects, all of them in the fire except one. He said, who are they ya rasulullah? He said, those who are upon what I'm upon, and what my companions are upon. So how is it that people who are striving to be upon what the companions were upon, you make tibdi of them. You make tafsik of them just because they're not down with you. Because you don't see them at your lecture. Because they're not known to you. Where's the kawaid? Uh, Where are those principles? Where's the duwabit, those criterion that the ulama sunnah have laid down? as a path. But instead, we have extremism in taking one another off the sunnah. And it's for many reasons. Some of the reasons is we have differences in hearts. And that's natural. People are going to have differences. But it's how to deal with those differences. And the ulama sunnah have made that clear. And if you look at the seerah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll see the clarity there. You'll see that not everyone who falls into an innovation or everyone who makes a mistake is a mubtadiyah. Or everyone you think is done a mistake is wrong. That's why it's, it takes tahqiq and it takes bayan, it takes clarification, and it takes affirming and looking to see if someone has really even made a mistake. Or is it just some masail ijtihadiya or some masail hizbiya? They're just not down with you. So they've got to be off it. They've got to be a mubtadiya. And this is what you busy, a lot of the new Muslims are busy with it. Ahlul Sunnah has to make ta'awun. Have the wajib. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. The Prophet sallallahu said, a Muslim, akhul Muslim, you should do ba'da hu ba'da. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, the Muslim is the brother to a Muslim. They strengthen one another. Is, these are nusus. So how is it Ahlul Sunnah is fighting over the most basic things. How is it that people are so quick to take people off the minhaj, the methodology of Ahl Sunnah? It's imperative that there's criterion for that. Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he said, فَمَنْ قَالَ بِكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ وَالْإِجْمَعَةِ فَهُوْ مِنْ أَحْلُ السُنَّةِ وَالْجِمَعَةِ That's in general, that's a moment. And how many statements of the Salaf showing us the importance of adhering to the Sunnah and being one? And how the Salaf were, how they felt about when someone 
uh, from Ahlul Sunnah died, but we almost rejoice. We almost fight and kill to take one another off the Sunnah over petty things. And so I wanted to mention this very simple kalima for that reason to say that my position, which doesn't matter, it's I'm nobody, but I just want to mention what, what I'm going to die upon, bi'idhnillah, is, is cooperating with Ahlul Sunnah. Because there is a hajj shadeed. There is an extreme need to deal with the falsehood and hezbiya and the ma'asi that is consuming our youth and consuming the communities. Most of the communities don't even pay attention to Ahlul Sunnah. Most of the communities, they, they're getting their needs met from Ahlul Bid'ah. And they support a lot of these mainstream Akhwana Muslimin oriented groups. Ahlul Sunnah, what are you doing? Are you busy destroying one another? And I'm going to end just with one simple statement. The name of the book that our Sheikh, Sheikh uh, Imam Abdul Masan al Abad, mentioned. What did he say? Ruthkin Ahlul Sunnah bil Ahlul Sunnah. Gentleness, Ahlul Sunnah with Ahlul Sunnah. This is what is absolutely imperative. It's an obligation. That we have gentleness with one another and we try to correct one another, not destroy one another's reputation and letting dunya things corrupt us. Jealousy, envy, arrogance, letting these things split. And we ask all the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us to cooperate based on the Book of Allah and the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the Shaitan.